the American people also elected Donald Trump to be the president of the United States in the 2016 election, and there's one party that can't seem to get over it. Now, we understand the fact that in 2018, you took the House of Representatives, and we haven't spent our time during your tenure and hour trying to remove the Speaker of the House, trying to delegitimize your ability to govern. Frankly, we'd love to govern with you. We'd love to pass USMCA. We'd love to put out a helping hand to our seniors and lower prescription drug prices. It's the will of the people you ignore when you continue down this terrible road of impeachment. Professor Gerhardt, you gave money to Barack Obama, right? Uh, my family did, yes. Four times? I, I That sounds about right, Mike. Yes. Mr. Chairman, I have a series of unanimous consent requests relating to Professor Feldman's work. Mr. Feldman wrote articles entitled, Trump's wiretap tweets raise risk of impeachment. He then wrote, Mar-a-Lago ad belongs in impeachment file. And then Mr. Uh, Jake Flanagan wrote in, in courts, a Harvard law professor thinks Trump could be impeached over fake news accusations. My question, Professor Feldman, is since you seem to believe that the basis for impeachment is even broader than the basis that my Democrat colleagues have laid forward, do you believe you're outside of the political mainstream on the question of impeachment? I believe that impeachment is warranted whenever the president abuses his power for personal benefit or to corrupt the democratic process. Did you but write an article entitled, It's Hard to Take Impeachment Seriously Now? Yes, I did write. And in that article, did you write and did, did you write it on time? So T and I wrote. Did you write since in since the like 2018 what? midterm election, House Democrats have made painfully clear that discussing impeachment is primarily or even exclusively a tool to weaken President Trump's chances in 2020. Did you write those words? Until this call in July 25th, I was an impeachment skeptic. They're all changed my mind, sir. And for Thank good you. I appreciate your testimony. Professor Carlin. You gave two thousand bucks, or you gave a thousand bucks to Elizabeth Warren, right? I believe so. You gave twelve hundred bucks to Barack Obama. I have no reason to question that. And you gave two thousand bucks to Hillary Clinton. That's correct. That's Why so much more for Hillary than the other two? Because I've been giving a lot of money to charity recently because of all of the poor people in the United States. Well, those aren't the only those aren't the only folks you've been given to. Now, you, you have you ever been on a podcast called the Versus Trump? I think I was on a live panel that the people who ran the podcast called Versus Trump. On that, do you remember saying the following? Liberals tend to cluster more. Conservatives, especially very conservative people, tend to spread out more, perhaps because they don't even want to be around themselves. Did you say that? Yes, I did. Understand how that reflects contempt on people who are conservative? No, what I was talking about there was the natural tendency, if you put the quote in context, the natural tendency of a compactness requirement to favor a party whose voters are more spread out. Well, and I do not, again, I'm very, I'm very limited on time, Professor. And, and so I just have to say, when you talk about how liberals want to be around each other and cluster and conservatives don't want to be around each other and so they have to spread out, it makes people, you may not see this from, you know, like the ivory towers of your law school, but it makes actual people in this country. When they're like, this you falls and men all get to interrupt me on this time. Now, let me also suggest that when you invoke the president's son's name here, when you try to make a little joke out of referencing Baron Trump, that does not lend credibility to your argument. It makes you look mean. It makes you look like you're attacking someone's family, the minor child of the president of the United States. So let's see if we can get into the facts. To all of the witnesses, if you have personal knowledge of a single material fact, to the Schiff report, please raise your hand and let the record reflect. No personal knowledge of a single fact. And you know what? That continues on the tradition that we saw Adam Schiff, where Ambassador Taylor did not identify an impeachable offense. Mr. Kent never met with the president. Fiona Hill never heard the president reference anything regarding military aid. Mr. Hale was unaware of any nefarious activity with aid. Carl Vingman even rejected the new Democrat talking point that bribery was invoked here. Ambassador Volker denied that there was a quid pro quo, and Mr. Morrison said there was nothing wrong on the call. The only direct evidence came from Gordon Sondland, who spoke to the President of the United States, and the President said, I want nothing. No quid pro quo. And you know what? I mean, if wiretapping a political opponent's and only these I look forward to room and that Inspector General, because maybe it's a different place and I wish him each